Welcome to Planner Peace, the masterclass. For those of you who are joining me, I am so excited to be presenting this class. This is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time because the concept of planner peace is something that I know so many of us really want to attain, but within the planner community, it can be a little bit difficult. And I myself have even had my own crazy journey in productivity and planning to find my own planner piece. So I'm hoping that today's class gives you guys um, sort of an insight into the way that I view planner piece and the process that I took and the things that I think you guys need to think about if you're looking for planner piece in your life. Because I will say that since I've achieved my planner piece, um, I, it's been a real really strong feeling. Like it's something where I think it was back in 2015 is really when I, I achieved planner piece, I think fully. And now we're in 2017. So it's been a few years and I feel like as I continue on my journey of planning in my peaceful planner setup, planning becomes easier, productivity becomes easier, acting on my to-dos and my tasks and my priorities becomes easier. So I think that there's just so many benefits to finding planner peace. And I'm sure that if you guys are here today, you are someone who is struggling with this as well, um, or you're someone who is just getting started in the planner world and wants to start off on a good foot. So I'm really excited to introduce this topic to you. Um, I'm really excited about today's class, and I hope that you guys learn a lot. Okay, so let's start with who I am. So for those of you who may not be familiar with me, hello, my name is Alexis, and I'm also known as Miss Trenchcoat all across the internet. I design and sell digital tools to help you work smarter, not harder. I blog over at my site, strangecharmed.com, as you guys know, you're here on my YouTube channel, Miss Trenchcoat. If you are not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and feel free to give this video a thumbs up um, while you're here, while we're you know waiting to get into it. And of course, I also run my own digital shop, thecharmedshop.com, where you can purchase many different free and paid um, productivity tools that really help you get organized and learn how to execute in your own life. So that is who I am. But most importantly, the thing about me that I think is most important really is that I really love productivity and I love planners. And the reason I'm so drawn to the topics of productivity and planning is because I really do believe that I'm like one of the world's laziest people, okay? And I know that I say that a lot and people think, you, lazy Alexis, no way, but I really, really am. And for me, productivity and planning helps me to learn how to work smarter, not harder. It helps me to learn how to do more work that is meaningful um, while spending less time, right? So I'm able to achieve more in less time. I'm able to focus better on what's important. Um, so for me, I am very interested in living a life and running a business that is as free of stress, drama, and overwhelm as possible. No one can completely avoid those things in their life, especially if you have a business um, or if you have you know, really anyone's life. It doesn't matter if you, if you run your own business, if you work for someone else. Stress, drama, overwhelm, it happens. It's natural. Um, but today I want to inspire more of you to live what I like to call a charmed life that is focused on achieving your own goals and not just helping other people achieve theirs. And I think this is a really important point because I feel like, especially since I know that the vast majority of us on this call today are women, and we all know that as women, many of us tend to default into that sort of people-pleasing mode, like the mom mode, where we're very interested in helping other people achieve their goals, but we're almost like a little bit too afraid to step out and claim our own goals and you know claim responsibility for our own lives. It's easier sometimes to just say, you know what, I'm just gonna you know, be the mom, I'm just gonna be the wife, you know, I'm just gonna be the, you know, the employee. But I really want to encourage many of you guys through productivity and planning to really step out and really claim, you know, what it is that you want for your life and know that it is possible um, for you to make your dreams, your goals, your projects, your plans a reality. Um, you know, I'm sure not every one of us on here, you know, is gonna have crazy big overwhelming goals. Most of us have very, I think, very uh, moderate goals, like things that are really achievable. It's just a matter of getting organized and getting productive and getting focused. So I hope to inspire you guys to that end in today's masterclass. 
Now, let's go ahead and talk about my planner journey because that is a big part of this. My planner journey, my journey to planner peace. If you have been following me for quite some time, much of this information is probably going to be, um, you know, review for you. But if any of you have started following me recently, it might be good for you to kind of see that I'm just like the rest of the planner folks out there. Um, it took me a while to find my planner piece and to really find my groove. And my planner journey really started back in 2014 when, um, you know, my love of planners was reignited. Now I say reignited because I've always been like a planner person and I was definitely someone who had planners when they were younger and in high school and in college and things like that. But in 2014, I really feel like that was when the planner community started exploding and these planner videos were coming up and I wanted to be part of this planner movement. So 2014 is when it all began. And that year I purchased so many planners, like actually probably the bulk of the planners that I own were purchased in 2014, right? Because we all get so excited and we all want to buy all of the planners, buy all of the things. I had some Kiki K's, some Kate Spades, some Filofaxes, and I was using multiple planners. I had like, you know, an A5 for bigger things and I had my personal to take with me out and about when I'm like hopping and bebopping around. I used a collection of random inserts within these planners. Some of them were inserts that I designed and others were ones that I found online and downloaded. You know, some of them were actually like inserts that came with planners as well. So I really had like a hodgepodge of inserts inside of my planner, just kind of trying to figure out what was going to work and, you know, getting lots of inspiration from the you know, this burgeoning planner community that was out there. And of course, another big part of 2014 was really, I was doing a lot of what we would call pretty planning with stickers and washi, but it wasn't really bringing me peace. And you can see here, there's like a cute little picture of, you know, my Kate Spade planner and, you know, washi tape in it. And, you know, it's so interesting because when you, when I see this picture and I realize for you guys, you know, you really don't know the backstory of the pictures that I take, but this picture you know, it was taken and you can see that I've got like decoration on the page, like washi tape, and you can't see any plans written, right? Because I was almost in the beginning at this, I was at this place, not almost, I definitely was at this place where I just wanted my spreads to look pretty and it didn't really matter what I was writing in there because for me, being a planner meant I was using stickers and decorating and that was what I was going for. But Ultimately, it wasn't bringing me any peace. It definitely wasn't bringing me any very much productivity because I was focused on making it look good instead of making it functional, right? So as we continue on, in 2015 was really when I started to identify what my planning issues were, right? So I was beginning to see that in 2014, I had bought all the things, so much pretty planning. You guys know there's all these hauls on my channel from 2014 from all the stores, Target and Michaels and Joann's, and I could not even fathom how much money I spent on planner supplies. Uh, give me an amen in the comments if you guys feel me on that one. But, you know, once 2015 hit, I was really thinking like, geez, like I really, I really need to figure out what's going on here because I shouldn't be so all over the place. Like I just, I could feel that I didn't have planner peace, even though you know, at various times I thought I had planner piece even throughout 2014, but looking back on it, I really didn't. Um, so in 2015, I started using what I would consider more of a complete system for my inserts and like what I was doing within my planner, right? I had a system going on. And I started to designing more of my own inserts and started using my own inserts like 100% starting in 2015. No more of this hodgepodge, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I needed inserts that were um, right for my lifestyle, like right for what I needed, right for the size of my planner, right? These are all things that we all struggle with. And also in 2015, I would say that project planning became a big focus in my planner. So my planner wasn't just about, um, you know, writing down like tasks and to do's. It was being used for more forward planning. It wasn't just me writing down information that I needed to remember. It was really developing you know, project plans and making sure that I was moving myself forward on my goals. 
And of course, as you can see in this picture, I was still pretty planning, but I would say I was pretty planning with a purpose because my inserts were starting to work better for me because I was using more of a complete system. And at least when I was using my stickers and my washi, it was in places where it was okay. As you can see, like in this picture, um, you know, I have some tasks written down, you know, maybe this isn't the best example, but you know, I do have some stickers as well going on, but I still was getting some things done. And in different sections of my planner, I was doing project planning, which was also very important. Then in mid 2015, something really awesome happened, which was I launched my Charmed Life Planner. Okay, so the Charmed Life Planner, if you guys are not familiar, it is a printable planner as everything within my shop is printables um, or digital products. And it was my first functional planner with what I called continuous style inserts that included calendars, trackers, and weekly spreads to plan on. So when I say continuous, it means that like it's, you know, it starts with like January with the month on two pages, then it has like the January master monthly task list, and then the January um, expense sheet, and then it goes into the weeks of January, and then February's month on two pages starts. So all my other inserts had always been like just like whatever the spread was, like a week on one page, a week on two pages, things like that, or like the month on two pages. I never had a system that was kind of this continuous system where you just flip through the year, right? It wasn't necessarily based on having lots of different sections in your planner. So that was something that ended up happening for me was that because I had this continual, continuous style inserts, I ended up removing a lot of those excess sections from my planner. If you could see in the previous you know, picture, you might be able to see there's plenty of dividers in there. And let me tell you, there was like, I had like dividers for everything, you know, like I had a lot of different sections in my planner that were just kind of taking up space. It was just somewhere I was writing down information, but it wasn't information I was always acting on, right? But once I launched the Charm Life Planner and kind of started streamlining my system, you know, the Charm Life Planner ended up becoming my ride or die planner, right? And the one that I use from my shop, and we'll talk about um, the different ones later, but the one that I use is the half letter size that is the vertical week on two pages that is the spread and you can kind of see it here where it's got your top three to do's and then it's got like the open to do list and then an open spot at the bottom for you to write in whatever you want. And this was my ride or die planner. As soon as I launched it, I was like using it. I used it in a disc bound as you can see. And um, really, yeah, it really started, it was really the place from which I found true planner piece. Then in 2016, um, I decided to experiment a little bit. You guys may have seen that video that I made on how to DIY your own spiral planner. I basically just took the Charmed Life Planner inserts that I already had. They were already my inserts, right? So my system was the same. And all I did was changed out the binding. So we're gonna be talking about this idea of binding a little bit later, but I wanna make sure you guys like understand that you know, there's planners in terms of like the binding and there's planners in terms of the systems of the actual inserts inside. So I know a lot of people were confused when I went to Spiral, <laughs> the Spiral Planner, um, after being like such a six ring binder girl. But I just wanted to try it. You know what I mean? It was definitely like a versatile sort of binding. Um, I liked that everything was kind of like in its own book, but it wasn't 100% right for me. And so in the middle of 2016, I went back to my disc bound, right? And so I'm still using the same insert set from the previous spiral bound at this time, right? I just set it back up in a disc bound, right? Just reprinted my inserts, put them back in for the second half of 2016. And my decor also really changed with the Charmed Life Planner as well. As you guys can see in this picture, you know, my decor, I would say it was a little bit more minimal and definitely way more functional, right? So there wasn't just like a lot of stickers that were pretty. There were mostly stickers that were either inspirational or they were organizational, right? So they were helping me to, you know, call out certain information. As you guys can see, there's kind of like flags on here. There's like a, a coffee date sticker, you know, all of these sorts of things like my blog post sticker, the social media sticker. Um, you know, there's so many different stickers that these also came from my shop and were printables. But, you know, these were more functional. It wasn't about just being pretty and not having any information. It was about organizing information in a pretty way, creating hierarchy through these functional planning stickers. And at this point, I'll definitely say the planner piece seriously was, was really setting in here. Because let me tell you, I would say that this was like, the highlight of my planning like this picture because I had the system that I wanted and needed and was working for me and I had like even I was fulfilling my creativity with my functional planning stickers right and it was giving me a lot of hierarchy 
And I was just, it, I had like a, an amazing feeling when I, when I looked into my planner, right? So definitely had a lot of planner piece at that point. Now it's 2017, right? And I'm still in my Discbound Charmed Life Planner. As you can see this picture from a little earlier this year, I'm still using the same setup. Um, but I would definitely say that, you know, things are continuing to change for me as I, the longer that I'm in planner piece, like the more things start to change, right? So no, I no longer spend a small fortune on planner supplies or at the target dollar spot. Like that's probably the biggest thing that sort of happened when I reached planner piece was I really stopped buying. Um, a lot of different stationery and, you know, number one, started using what I already had, but I also just started feeling like I needed to streamline everything because my planner was streamlined. So there, you know, I gave away a lot of different like planner supplies that I had that I just weren't, wasn't using anymore that were more for pretty planning and things like that, right? So because I had a whole stash, I'm sure just like every one of you here probably has a stash of planner supplies, <laughs> um, stationery supplies and things like that, scrapbook supplies that are for your planner. But once I was really firmly in planner piece, you know, it's so easy for me. I go, I do go check the target dollar spot, but it's so easy for me to go, meh, I don't need it. Like I know that I'm not going to use it. Like I know that I don't need it. I know that my system works and I don't need like a pretty page flag to make me feel confident in my planner or make me feel like, you know, I want to go to my planner, right? Like I already do it because I've got that routine and I've got that piece that's really set in. Another thing that's really big about now, if I compare, you know, where I am now to years ago is I don't compare my planner to other people's planners anymore. And I know that this is a problem that many of us have is that we see different planners because we see other people's setups and we see the Instagram pictures and we watch the videos. And there are some people out there who, let me tell you, like, bless them, like their planners look like pieces of art, right? But that's not going to be everyone. And it for me, it's not the expectation that I want to set for my planner. I don't care at this point, even though I, you guys know I'm a little bit OCD, I don't care if my planner looks like a wreck as long as it's got the information in it that I need um, because as long as it's helping me be productive, it's being useful for me. So I really cut back on, you know, comparing my planner to other people, you know, and I'm not going to say like, you know, for some people you may want to like, you know, you know, kind of cool it with like watching videos and things like that if you know that they influence you or maybe like, you know, cut, cut back on Instagram or things like that if you know that certain, you know, planner people, you know, you always look at their planner and it looks perfect and it makes you feel like less. But I mean, a big part of my planner journey was really just being honest with myself and saying, I'm not going to be comparing myself to other people because I'm not like what Alexis needs is not the same as what someone else needs. So I was really content with doing my own thing and very, just very, had this very strong sense of planner piece. And I really, if you guys know, I've been there for a while and I'm still there. So that's really, you know, the long and the short of my journey. But to sum it all up, right? So my journey to planner piece, I went through many different binders, many different inserts, and lots of accessories through the years. It cost me a lot of money. I was always on the hunt for the next best thing. I never stuck to anything very long until I decided to go back to the root of planning. So if you feel like you're in a similar situ situation, today's masterclass is going to help. If you keep an open mind and get honest with yourself about your needs and expectations, and you guys, this is going to be like a theme, you know, you really need to be honest with yourself about what you need from a planner and what you expect from your planner. because. I think a lot of us set really high expectations. I think, again, that's just something that I think sometimes us as women do, maybe people who are a type A, if you're like me, if you're a planner person, um, someone who loves organization, you know, we try to, we tend to set high expectations and we end up ultimately many times letting ourselves down. So this is kind of going to be a theme in today's masterclass. So if you're open-minded about it, I think you guys are definitely going to learn a lot. So the first thing that I want to talk about in terms of planner piece is my definition of planner piece. So you guys really understand where I'm coming from with all of this. Now for me, having planner piece, right? Achieving planner piece means having confidence in your planner and using it to achieve your own personal ends, right? So whatever your whatever it is that you want to achieve through your planner, having planner piece means you have got confidence in your planner and you're actually using it. And it's progressing whatever it is that you want to progress, right? Whatever you need in your life, whatever you need it to serve, it is progressing that for you. Now, in today's class, we are going to really talk about three major concepts, right? So 
that are really all related to this idea of finding planner piece. So the first concept we're going to talk about in this first section is understanding why you're using your planner and what you should be using it for. So why use a planner, what it's supposed to be used for. Again, my opinions, my views on planner piece, but definitely I think very logical, very reasonable place to start. The next section is going to be about designing a planning system that works for you. You guys, I'm sure, because I know from your questions, many of you guys are still looking for the system that works for you, really trying to put things together. And we're going to be talking about the system in the second part of this. So hopefully you guys are going to get some great inspiration for that. And then finally, in the third and final section, we're going to be talking about developing a consistent planning practice, because that's really the name of the game, right? Like if you want to reach planner piece, you want to be using your planner consistently and relying on it, right? So that is where we're going to go, you know, at the end, right? We're going to be moving through these three topics. That is what we're talking about today. So let's just go ahead and jump in to part one, which is understanding why you're using your planner and what you should be using it for. And a great quote that I love when it comes to planning is, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. And that's from Benjamin Franklin. You know, I really think that planners are a great tool for people to use, but we need to make sure that we know why, what we're trying to get out of it and why we're using it, right? And what it's meant for. So the first thing that's kind of like an activity that is inside of your workbook that went out is I want you guys to answer this question. What do you want your planner to do for you? Okay, and I've given you um, a little bit of space for you to kind of write out what it is that you want your planner to do for you. What are, what are your expectations of your planner right now as you're sitting here in this class? I think this is a really important important question for you to ask because it goes back to the whole point of being honest with yourself and setting expectations um, because you can't achieve anything unless you've got clear expectations for what you want. So take a moment, start writing it down, um, what it is that you want to be getting out of your planner, what you want your planner to do for you. Okay. And you've got some space in your workbook for that. Now, conversely to that, and I also have another space in the workbook for you to write down this as well, I would love you to identify what you see as three obstacles to achieving that end, right? So what are three things that are stopping you right now from actually getting your planner to do what you want and getting your planner to reach the expectations you have for you? Think about what the obstacles are and be really honest with yourself about what your obstacles are. Because we're not going to be able to achieve planner peace unless we know what we're expecting and we know what the obstacles are so we know what we have to overcome. Okay, so now I'm going to start with why we use planners, okay? And I know some of you may still be writing down. Obviously, you guys can write and come back to things as you go with this class. So we're going to start with why we actually use planners, okay? And I want to start with some common misconceptions. These are common things that people tell me um, about why we use planners that I think are just they're, just, they're just not accurate. I think they're not accurate. They're maybe a little bit too, they're not like a wide enough view of the world in reality, I think. So the first thing that I hear all the time is that you only need a planner if you have goals, a job, or projects to work on. And I think that this is a little bit silly. I think anybody can be using a planner. And it, like any stage in life, I hear from people a lot who, maybe someone who's in college who will say like, oh, you know, I don't have a job yet, so I don't need a planner. Or I can talk to someone who might be retired who will say, you know, I don't have a job anymore. You know, I don't have my kids to raise anymore. I don't need a planner. But they want a planner, right? I think if you want a planner, then that's enough of a need for you. And that there are things that you can be using your planner for, um, which is really important. We'll be talking about what you're going to be using it for later. But everyone who is alive and has tasks that they have to do, um, you know, it doesn't matter how big your goals are or how small your goals are or what occupies your time. If you're a mom or if you are someone who is unemployed or if you're someone who is working a job or maybe you're someone who runs their own business or has a side hustle or all of the following, like it doesn't matter what your situation is. Anyone can use a planner. So if that's something that you're thinking about, like, oh, I wish I could use a planner, but I, I don't think I need one. Like, it's just, it, you know, I don't think it's necessary for my life. Well, if you want one, I'll give you some ideas for what, what you can be doing to use it so that you're really advancing your life, right? And this goes back to what your expectations are. So if you're clear about what your expectations are, you definitely can have your planner fill those needs for you. 
Next common misconception I hear a lot is that owning a, or this is kind of like actually the way people act sometimes, is owning a planner and filling it with information will automatically make you more organized and productive. That's a, another fallacy, you guys. A planner is a tool. It's not a magic wand. Just owning it and like setting it up is not what's going to actually make you organized and productive. Now I get it, right? Psychologically, once you've set your planner up, you feel organized and productive. But the truth is, is that unless you're coming back to that planner and using it and developing your consistent routine, you're not, you're not actually organized and productive, right? So I know that some of, I feel like for many of us, and I feel like for me actually too, at one point, I just thought having a planner was like a sign. Like I had a planner, it was a sign that I'm a productive person. Like I'm organized because I have a planner. But it's not necessarily true, right? It's your actions speak louder than your words or your planner in and of itself. So, um, you know, that's something you want to keep in mind. A planner is a tool. It doesn't solve problems for you. You have to do the work. It's just a tool that you use in order to get there. And the final misconception that I, I really feel like is a big deal for many people is that a planner can be a scrapbook, a journal, a recipe book, etc., a home binder, whatever you want to, whatever other sort of binder or storage system. Now, when I say planner, a planner is for planning. Yes, we can put different information inside of a planner, but when we do that, I think we're causing a lot of confusion and clutter. And if you think back to my planner journey that I just shared with you guys, and I was talking about all those different sections I had, where I was writing down information, and it wasn't always information that was really necessary for me to keep in my planner, and it wasn't always information that was necessary for me to act on, and I definitely... I definitely just had sections that like, I would go back and go, this is like a waste. Like, I don't need this at all. Um, so I think that if you're someone who is struggling to put together a system for yourself, then really understanding that, you know, scrapbooking within a planner, I actually think it's funny because I think scrapbooking is actually the opposite of planning, where planning is what you do ahead of time to like map out what your actions and activities are going to be. Scrapbooking is the opposite for me. For me, scrapbooking is what you do to kind of collect the memories once everything's already done. So you have like, you know, a memory keeping system. So yes, people use planners and they use binders as scrapbooks. But it's again, back to your expectations, you're not using it as a planner if you're not planning in it. Like if a planner is being used to journal, you're not planning in it. It's not actually helping you plan. Same thing with like everything else, recipe book, like a home binder, things like that. A planner is for planning. So that's a common misconception that I feel like really ends up overwhelming people. And I see a lot of people in the community because who I feel like fall into this because there's so many videos out there where people are showing different ways that you could use a planner, but you could use, you know, you know, I could use a fork. Let's here we go. Little Mermaid. I could use a fork to comb my hair, but that's not what it's for. Right. And I can't call it a fork if it's combing my hair. What do I have to call it? What was the name that she called that? I forget. Someone's probably going to leave it in the comments, but there was another word that they used for what it was <laughs> that they named a, a, a fork. So I'm saying you can use anything for any purpose, but if you're using a planner for not planning, then you're, you're not actually planning and you're definitely not going to find planner piece that way. Okay. So now let's talk about this concept of a planner versus a binder. This kind of goes in with this, right? So when I say planner, I mean a system for containing information specific to the actions that fill and progress your life, okay? So specific to the actions that fill and progress your life. A planner can be a bound notebook, right? So it could just be like a spiral notebook you have that just has lines in it. It can be a ring binder that has planning inserts in it. It can be an app or a digital program with a calendar and task functions, but a binder itself is not a planner. So if you're thinking like, you know, an empty file of facts is itself a planner, it's not. It's a binder. What you choose to put inside of that, that covering, that binder, is what turns it into a planner. And that's why I say you can even get like a bound notebook that's like, like just like, you know, a college ruled notebook and you could turn it into a planner if you were using like bullet journaling, right? You could turn it into a planner. It's all how you use it. But you could take that same college ruled notebook and make it a sketchbook and you could make it a journal and you can make it a scrapbook. There's, it's all the way that you're using it. And when I say planning, what a planner is, is a system for gathering your actions that will progress your life. So making sure you're getting things done. 
So try to keep in mind, like when I say planner, we're not talking about a binder. When I mean binder, I mean binder. When I say planner, I mean something that you're using to actually plan your life with. And I also want to touch on the concept of planner sizes and styles because I did get a lot of questions about this and I think that this kind of fits in with expectations as well. That there are many different options out there for planners and binders in different sizes and styles. So it's impossible for me to cover them all today. I mean, you guys, you guys know, even like listening, you guys listing out what planners you were using, there was multiple different systems. And I'm sure if I even dug deeper and you guys told me what inserts you were using, there'd be multiple different even inserts in there. So I'm not going to be able to cover that specifically, but I do have a little, um, you know, in the workbook where you actually have the ability to kind of like, you know, answer some questions that will help you choose a size that works for you. Um, but there's so many different systems out there, you guys, and I'm going to teach you what needs to go in the system so that you know what to, how to recognize a good planning system. But there's no way I'm going to be able to cover them all today. I'm sure you guys can understand that. So here's some tips I have for you for choosing your size. There is a worksheet inside of the workbook related to this. So I think that the first thing you want to think about when it comes to choosing your planner, specifically like the size and in, to some extent too, like even like the style of it, like if it's going to be like a Filofax with like a six ring or if it's going to be a spiral planner or if it's going to be a notebook, et cetera, or if it's going to be disc bound, et cetera. So I think that if you think about where you're going to be using your planner most of the time, that can help you with choosing your size. Because obviously, if you are someone who, like, like me, I work from home, my planner stays on my desk. So having an A5 is great for me. I could even have a bigger planner technically because my planner really doesn't go in very many places with me. Um, so for me, if most of the time the bigger planner works for me and it gives me more space and it gives me more flexibility, that works. But if you're someone who maybe works outside of the home and maybe you're like a, like a traveling sales rep, it might be hard for you to carry around a larger planner. So maybe you do want the smaller planner. Um, it's just really all, you know, thinking about where you're actually going to be using the planner most of the time. And I will say, remember, most of the time is the operative like part of this phrase here, because you're never going to find a planner that's going to like be perfect in every scenario. Like even though I very rarely take my planner out of the house and so a bigger planner works for me, if I needed to take it out of the house, you know, there are times where I do need to take it out of the house. So it's, is it a hundred percent like perfect size for traveling? No, but I'm willing to put up with that because a majority of the time it's the great size for where I'm working. I also want you guys to think about the size of your handwriting because your size of your handwriting really does kind of factor into this. And I got a couple questions about that from people um, ahead of time. And, you know, if you're someone who has larger handwriting, then you really need to either think about get using a larger planner or getting inserts that give you more space per day. So if you're someone who's using like a personal size planner and like that's what you need because of the portability for the way that you work, but you've got big handwriting, well, maybe instead of the week on two pages layout, you're going to need like a day per page layout so that it actually fits your handwriting and fits the size of the planner. So think about that as well. And I also think you need to think about how many events and tasks you have. If you're someone who's got a really busy full life, right, a day per page might, you know, might really be the thing that you need, right, because you've got a lot of things to write down, you've got a lot of things to map out in your schedule. But if you're someone who, like, maybe just has a couple of tasks and maybe, like, an appointment here and there, you know, a week on two pages or a week on one page sort of spread is something that may work for you, um, whether or not you're using an, you know, an A5 or a personal. So think about that as well. Um, think about how many events and tasks you have. If you're someone who needs that bigger planner for more space, for more events and things like that, then, you know, just be honest with yourself and that will help you to set the right expectations so that your planner actually helps you to get to planner peace. Now, what about pretty planning? Because I did talk about that in my own planner journey, and I know many of you are concerned about that as well. I got lots of questions about that as well. Now, pretty planning, if you're not familiar with this concept, this topic, it's when we use scrapbooking decor to enhance the planning experience and create an inspirational or inviting look inside our planners. So the sorts of decor that we would use would be like stickers, washi tape, colored pens and pencils, and different sorts of scrapbooking ephemera. There's so many different things that you could put inside of your planner to make your planner look pretty, right? Now, if you're someone who does pretty planning and likes pretty planning and it works for you, that's great. 
I think that using design elements can help create structure in a planner. As I mentioned before, when I was using my stickers inside of my planner, my functional stickers, it helps to create structure. And I think that those sorts of things do help with your productivity and help for different information to stand out in your planner. But if it's detracting from your productivity or from managing your actions, it becomes a liability. Like I said, a planner is meant to be a place that collects information about your activities so you can progress your life. If you are more concerned about where a sticker is going to go than having room to write down a task, that is a problem. That means your planner is becoming a liability and whether or not you're stoked about pretty planning, um, you're ultimately going to um, find that you are going to probably lose steam because you are not actually acting um, or getting things done as much as you could be. Now, obviously, if you're someone who all your expectation is, is that you are going to pretty plan, then that's fine. But just be honest with yourself about it because, you know, expecting one thing and doing another are just not going to really lead you to a sense of peace. It's really going to, you know, put you in a situation where you feel like, nothing's happening, nothing's getting done, and you feel like you don't know why, it could be because your expectations and reality are not like the same thing. I have nothing against pretty planning at all. Like seriously, I don't. I think it's beautiful if you can actually make it work. So if you're struggling with sticking to your planning because pretty planning takes over, this is what I actually would recommend to you. If you're someone who really wants to pretty plan, but you can't actually get it done productively. I'd recommend having one planner for the actual planning that you're going to do and one binder. Notice how I use the word binder because it's no longer a planner <laughs> if you're not actually planning in it. You use one binder for some sort of memory keeping, scrapbooking thing that you can actually decorate um, like on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. There's nothing wrong with that if you want to have that. A lot of people find pretty planning a really great creative outlet, but if it's becoming cumbersome, like if it's becoming an, a situation where you are focused more on the decor than your to-dos, then I think you really do need to split apart and just note and just, you know, tell yourself like, I'm, I'll have another binder, even if it's another planning system, right, where I'm going to be memory keeping, but I have to do my planning somewhere else because ultimately I want to be productive. And again, it's about being honest about your expectations and what you want. It's all about being honest about your expectations. So now I want to get to what planners should be used for. And you've got like a little fill in the blank activity for this one so that you guys are hopefully actively learning while we're discussing this. So I think that planners should be used for the following things. <laughs> to focus our actions and activities. That's number one, right? So that you're focusing on what you're going to be doing and how you're going to be spending your time. Again, because that's what's going to ultimately um, lead you to be progressing on your life, no matter what your goals and plans and projects are, as long as you're focusing on what actions are important and what activities are important, that is what your planner is for, is to help you do that. It's a tool to help you focus. A planner is also uh, something that needs to be used to manage our time, right? So our schedules, you know, what we're going to be doing. Um, you know, some of us have very busy days where we literally need to map out every little 15 minute or half hour block. Um, and some of us have days where, you know, it's very laissez-faire, like we can just do whatever we want, right? But if you, your planner really should be used for managing your time in one sense or another, um, no matter what your situation is, because, you know, if you want to be productive, if you want to be someone who's progressing, um, you need to have control over your time. Many of us get distracted, and this is not me telling anybody like how they should be spending their time, but I tend to get distracted a lot and will waste time and you know procrastinate and things like that, but your planner is a tool that will help you to manage your time a little bit better, right? And it's all like a muscle, right? It's all a muscle that we need to use in order to um, execute. Your planner should also be used to organize important information related to our actions and time. So you heard me talk about earlier about different sections in my planner and how I was streamlining my planner and removing sections. There's a difference between having like a section that is completely superfluous and a section where you're really putting information in there that are related to what you are doing, your tasks, and your schedule. So a good example of this would actually be like project planning. So if you have project plans inside of your planner, that's 
awesome because that's a way that you're organizing the information that's related to the actions that you need to take and the time that you need to spend to progress your goals and progress your projects, right? So you want to make sure that the information that you're putting in there isn't just superfluous, um, isn't something that's duplicated. Um, I'll give you a really good example of duplicating information that may, may not apply to everybody. So if this doesn't apply to you, that's fine. But I will say this. I know that I don't need a context, a contacts section in my planner. I know it because I've got all my contacts on my phone. And I would say many of us have um, cell phones, right, where we've, we're storing phone numbers and information for people. So yes, it's you know, some people would say it's great to have a backup, right? Great to have a paper backup. But if it's taking up precious space in your planner, then it's not helpful to you, right? It's becoming like a liability. So that's just an example of, you know, information that might not actually be related to our actions and time that some people would keep in their planner. Um, and it actually might be something that many of us are actually duplicating for little to no reason. Next thing, final thing your planner should be used for is to track our actions and time to improve productivity and efficiency. So like I said in my journey to Planner Peace story, as I was deeper and deeper inside of Planner Peace and like working in this system that worked for me, it became easier for me to be become productive and efficient because I was almost like teaching myself um, what to do. I was, I was really keeping myself on track with the work that I was supposed to be doing and, you know, the time that I was responsible for and the activities that I was responsible for attending and things like that. So a planner, the final thing that I think it should be used for is to track our actions and time to improve productivity and efficiency. And the reason I like included this list of these statements for you is because I want to make sure that you guys are kind of keeping attention on what you're actually putting in your planner and how you're using your planner so that it, you are able to establish and remain in a state of planner peace, right? So I think that if you almost use some of these statements as a litmus test for how you should be um, using your planner, I think it actually could probably help you help you great, greatly. So, um, you know, use this list, keep this list, kind of have it ingrained in your head. This is the way that I'm going to be using a planner. And if you're setting up a system for yourself, maybe use it as a litmus test, right? Like, Make sure that you're double checking things against what these statements say so that you're kind of keeping yourself on track. Now, what do you need in your... Kind of oh, sorry, you guys. I just started the video on my phone just to double check that we were still live. Awesome. Um, so going back here, what do you need in your planner? Okay. So let me find where I am in my notes here. <laughs> determining your planner needs, your planning needs, okay? So I want you to start by evaluating your life exactly as it is right now to think about answering this question, what you need in your planner. So you start with evaluating your life exactly as it is now. So what are your current obligations and priorities in your life? Who are you responsible for? What employers or activities, organizations, institutions take up your time? So really be really clear on your life. And when I say like your life right now, I know that I've, I've spoken to many people about this, that being really honest about where you are right now is an important part to finding planner peace and developing a system that works for you. Because I think that many of us find it so easy to live in the future or live in the past in terms of thinking, well, this is where I want to be. So I should have a planner that reflects where I want to be, not where I am right now. The problem is, is that you're not going to be able to get to where you want to go if you're using a system or setting up a system that that is not fitting your life as it is at the moment. So I hope that's clear for you guys. So think about what your obligations and priorities are. Think about who the people and places and things that you're responsible for, what employers and you know activities and things, things that take up your time because these are the things that need to take precedent in your planner, right? So above anything else, these things are the things that need to be the focus on your planner and need to be planned out inside of your planner. Now we come to another very popular topic, which I'm going to call the multiple planners debate. <laughs> Because many people ask me when it comes to, you know, because they have so much, right? You have so much in your life that you need in your planner that ultimately you find you need multiple planners. So 
people ask me all the time, how many planners should someone use? And I think you have one life, so you need one planner. And to me, this makes sense because, I mean, you only have one set of 24 hours every day. So I get that some people feel like they can separate different topics in their life out into different planners. But I think that what ends up happening is you just end up duplicating work. You end up missing things. Uh, because you've got your information in more than one place. So I think that having one planner means you're going to have all your important information related to your tasks and your schedules and your activities in one place. Like I think you don't need to, sp to spread it out. Like I think planning and being productive is hard enough. Like let's not, you know, cut off one of our arms here by like, you know, making it more difficult, right? So I think one planner is, should be enough for most people. Now, of course, there's exceptions to this. So I think that if you work outside of the home and your work stays at work, you can have a dedicated planner for work. Um, because I definitely had this situation. I definitely had when I was working at my corporate nine to five, you know, I had a planner that I used. It was actually like a moleskin notebook that was actually like a bullet journal style, but I didn't know I was bullet journaling at the time. Um, I left that at work. It didn't need to come home with me. It had notes for work. It had my task for work. It had my plans for work in it. So I think that's a situation where you can have a separate binder, right? And leave it there though, because it lives there because you're never going to need that information at home. And you never want to put any information in it at work um, that pertains to your personal life, right? So if you want to have two planners, maybe you'll bring like one planner, you'll, maybe you'll have one planner that stays at work and you can have another one in your bag, right? That you can write your personal things down in. But that's the only time, like that's one of the only times where I feel like having a second planner is okay and it's acceptable. I also think another exception to this is if you're using binders, again, using that word binders, and even planning inserts for memory keeping or organizing alternate information, then have as many as you like. Like if you've got like multiple filofaxes and you want to turn one into a journal, go at it. Like that's fine. But again, we're calling it a binder. We're not calling it a planner. We're calling it a journal. We're calling it a scrapbook. We're not calling it a planner because you're not actually planning in it. So keep that in mind, right? Now, why? Why do I think that you only should have one? I already mentioned this because like I said, it's too cumbersome to manage true plans in more than one planner or you end up duplicating information, which I think is a waste, okay? And again, if you're someone who is happily using more than one planner, what are you doing first of all at the Planner Piece Masterclass? Because if you already have Planner Piece, if you're using multiple, it's working for you. But if you're using multiple and it's not working for you, think about this, be honest with yourself and straightforward because... You need to have the right expectations if you want to get the right results, okay? And here we go, talking about tempering your expectations, right? You can't expect your planner to do it all, okay? You really only need it to do one thing well. It needs to contain your plans and tasks so you can stay on track. That's all your planner actually needs to do well. Um, although we see many examples of how you could use a planner or a binder that doesn't mean that we need to incorporate them all. There are many ways that you can use or do nearly anything in life, like we mentioned before, but we need to focus on our needs and see everything else for what it is. Interesting options that don't apply to us right now, right? So, you know, if you are someone who looks around and has trouble, you know, staying focused on what you need because you're seeing that someone else is doing X with their planner and you think that's cool, you can appreciate that. Like you can appreciate how awesome that is without having to actually do it yourself. Because the truth of the matter is, is that what we all end up doing, and I've done this too, we end up trying it. And then not only did we mess up whatever system we had going on that maybe was actually working a little bit, but we were not, we were just not happy with it because we saw something else that seemed like, you know, shiny objects under, we saw something else that seemed prettier, right? Um, and ultimately it ends up wasting our time because we don't end up even sticking to that either. So I think that the road to planner piece begins when you set reasonable expectations on yourself as well. This isn't just about your planner, it's yourself as well, because we're the ones that are setting the planner up. The planner is not a magic wand, it's not a solution, it is a tool. So really, you need to get right in your mind about planner piece and what you're expecting from your planner and what you need in your planner so that you can actually execute on what you really need and not just what you think you need or what you might want because it looks fun or looks pretty or looks interesting. Focus on your needs and that's the way to find your planner piece. So that was part one. 
Now we're on to part two, which is all about designing a planner system that works for you. A good system shortens the road to a goal. That is a quote by Orson Martin. And I'm just going to check to make sure we're still logged in here. Let's see. Yep. Looks like we're still going good. Perfect. Okay. Just want to do that because I know that I can't see when I'm in full screen. So that's why I've got my phone up. Sorry about that. Okay. So a good system shortens the road to a goal. And that's really true. I love this quote because... That is what planning is all about too. Having a planning system is that we are using a tool that will help us get where we're going quicker. Love that quote. Love it. Now, concept of planners as systems. Oh, sorry about that. Planners as systems. The best planners are systems for organizing information that make it easy for us to prioritize and execute in our lives. Now, I say prioritize and execute, right? Because that's something that many of us struggle with prioritization. We have too much on our plate and it overwhelms us to the point where we do not execute. So systems help us to prioritize and execute. And so planners are definitely a tool that can help you do that when you view it as a system. Now, what is a system? A system is a set of principles or procedures according to which things are done. In this scenario, it is a system of planning for you to prioritize and execute on plans and activities and tasks, right? So when you view planning as a system, it becomes more automated because clear rules, roles, and boundaries are prescribed around the process. So what is it that I recommend when it comes to creating a planner system? This should be no, this should not be new for most of you who are in my community already, functional planning. That is the system that I'm talking about. So functional planning, I just want to be clear, it's just planning. But in the planner community, everything needs a distinct name because we have a lot of terminology and options about planning that cause confusion. But functional planning, like I know, I've had people say to me, Alexis, functional planning is just planning. I'm like, yes. But because we've got pretty planning and because we've got intentional planning and because we have all these different types of planning out there, I just feel like it's necessary to put the functional in there so people understand that we're talking about planning to get stuff done here, not necessarily planning to... Um, fulfill a creative outlet or something like that, right? So it might not be fancy, but traditional planning is the fundamental core of the planning community that seems to have been buried under a sea of beautiful binders, stickers, and embellished paper clips. And I'm sure many of you guys probably feel the same way. I mean, I definitely know that there's people here on this call who are, um, who are more into functional planning, right? You guys are more, um, you're more into this like legitimized, like legitimate planning, right? But there's so many of us who are getting overwhelmed by the planner community because we've got so many different options and so many beautiful things that really take our attention elsewhere. But for me, finding a system is about being functional. So functional planning and creating a functional planning system that you can use to reach your goals is what I have in mind, okay? And that's what functional planning is. It is a system that you can use to reach your goals and the ends that you have in mind, that you've already set for yourself and your expectations. Now, let's talk about the functional planning system. The functional planning system has three roles. Like I said before, we'll go back to the definition of a system where we're talking about a you know set of principles or procedures according to which things are done, and it's a system is makes it more automated because there's clear rules and roles, okay? So there's three roles in a functional planning system. It is to schedule your events, to track your tasks, and to plan your actions. Those are the three roles of a functional planning system. If a system can't do all three of those things, it's not functional. Now, scheduling events. That's the first one of these uh, points here. Your planner needs dedicated space to mark your events. So I think it's very important to remember that you only want to be scheduling events that require your participation or action or something that affects you in some way or another. I do tend to see that a lot of people um, may put events in their planner that really don't have anything to do with something they actually need to do. And I'll give you an example of this that I realized does not apply to everybody in the same way. But let's say that you're someone who keeps your husband's work schedule in your planner. Now, if you're just doing that just to know when he's working and when he's not working, right? It might be a waste of space. 
But if you're doing it because you need to be able to plan for him as well, or you need to, you know, plan dinner so you want to know when he's going to be home, things like that, then it makes sense. There's so many things when it comes to planning where it's actually like it could be black or white, right? Or there's like a gray area really is really what this is. There's a gray area with a lot of this. So I just want to make sure you're focusing on putting information in your planner on your schedule that is something that actually affects your actions. Um, Because if it doesn't affect your actions, it's just wasting space. So some things that I think are great to put on your schedule are reoccurring events, like your trash days, paydays, et cetera, things like that. Anytime you've got something reoccurring, even like TV shows, if you wanted to do that, if it's something that you really love a TV show and you want to make sure you watch it and it's always, you know, Mondays at eight, whatever it is, you can feel free to put that in your schedule. Um, Your appointments, right? So doctor's visits, meetings, anytime you need to go somewhere um, that is out of the ordinary for you and your routine, you want to put your appointments in your schedule. And also special days, like holidays, events, parties, things like that. So that could also mean like birthdays and anniversaries and things like that if you want to keep track of, you know, people's birthdays and anniversaries, especially, again, if it's something where you plan to send a card to someone, right? So, you know, I used to actually write down like every single member of my family's birthdays, and I guess it's good to have that information somewhere, but I definitely don't need it in my my schedule if I'm not going to be like sending them a card. (laughs) <laughs> so, or buying them a present, right? Like if there's no end in mind for me, if there's no action required on my part, then, you know, it is a little bit of a waste of space. Again, it's a gray area. It depends on who the people are. Some people I will be buying them gifts or giving them a call or sending them a card. I don't need to track every single person though in my life. Just an example for you guys. Okay, so that's scheduling events. That's the first thing your planner needs to do. The second thing your functional planner needs to do is to track your tasks. So when it comes to task tracking, your planner needs dedicated space to track your tasks. And again, we're only tracking tasks that require your action. You don't need to write down things that don't apply to you or things that you might think like writing down something that your husband's doing. You, You may think like, oh, it's good information to have. It doesn't, but if it doesn't pertain to something you need to do, I mean, you would need to write down like, If it's a way that you might take something that your husband needs to do and like make it something you need to do is like remind husband to do X as opposed to put like husband needs to do X or like husband is doing X. Make sure you're tracking things properly. You really only need to be tracking things that require your action or attention. Like if if it's not something you need to act on, it doesn't need to be tracked by you because it's not, it doesn't pertain to your life necessarily or the way you are going to be spending your time really. So things that you're going to be tracking will be project plans. So a complete list of scheduled and unscheduled project-based actions. That's something that you would be tracking in a planner, in a functional planner. Um, Master monthly task list. It's a list of non-routine or project-based unscheduled tasks. So just like things that you need to get done. And when it comes to task lists, I love doing it on a monthly basis. I think that that's really the best way to do it because so many of us just have lists upon lists. If you're a list lover, you've got lists upon lists upon lists in your planner. I'm sure you do. So I like to keep my tasks broken out by month so that I know when they apply, like what it actually applies to. And for me, if like a task does not necessarily apply to a single month, like It's something that might be like in the future or someday maybe. It goes on a list that like is in the back of my planner that most likely will not be looked at um, very often because things really need to have a reason to like exist in your planner. Like tasks really need to be on a list that is something that you are paying attention to and acting on in order for it to be functional. Another thing that you'll be tracking is your weekly top five. So this is something that's like very near and dear to me, but it may not apply to every one of you. I just think it's a great principle for productivity. The weekly top five are five projects or tasks that you that really need to have your focus for the week. And this goes back to the fact that a planner will really help you find focus. I like to list out five projects or five, like it could be, some of them could be projects, some of them could be just be tasks that I'm just like, you absolutely need to get this done. This is like a focus for the week. Um, and why five? Because there's five days in a work week for most people, and um, it seems like a nice, happy number, five. So I think that, like, you know, if every day of your work week you're completing a project or completing, like, a task that is something that's necessary for you to do, you're achieving that focus, you're moving your goals forward, you're progressing with your life, you're being productive, and you're executing. 
And then of course there's the daily top three. Again, another one of these ideas that I just absolutely love and is part of my functional planning system. And the top three is top is your top three individual actions that should have your focus for the day. So the three things, like if there was only three things I could do today, what would they be? And make sure that these are individual actions, not like, oh, I have to finish this project and that project and another project. No, because projects have multiple steps, multiple different tasks and actions associated with them. So you want to make sure your top three is individual actions so that you're being laser focused on what your priorities are for the day. Again, prioritization buzzword here because that is what your planner is supposed to help you do. Learn to prioritize so that you can execute. Finally, planning your actions. Okay, so your planner needs dedicated space to plan your daily actions, your daily schedule, right? So I think that when it comes to planning your schedule and planning your actions out, take it one day at a time. I think it's hard to plan your actions over a series of days or a series of weeks even because things can change and things can pop up. Some people are really good at this. They can actually like plan their entire week out um, at one time, but I think for most of us, it probably isn't realistic. So I say take it one day at a time. Now that doesn't mean that you're not gonna have other you know, individual tasks on other days already mapped out, but you don't need to feel like you've got like from the morning when you wake up to the moment your eyes close and your head hits the bed at night mapped out. Like I don't think you need that every I don't think you need that um, for every day, right? Like, I don't think you need to have that, like, ahead of time. But take it one day at a time because it can be hard to plan um, for the more long-term, even if we think, like, oh, just a week is short-term. Things change all the time, and things pop up, and it throws your plans off. You want to be as flexible as possible. So when I'm talking about doing your daily schedule, right, your daily schedule includes things like your top three list, your scheduled events, and any additional tasks that you have to do. And there's two two ways, two strategies that I use really when it comes to creating a daily schedule. Number one is very straightforward, an hourly timetable. So if you're someone who likes to plan your daily actions out through an an hourly timetable because you like to see when things are going to be done. Maybe you've got a lot of appointments. Maybe you actually do time blocking or something like that where you're, you know, blocking up a period of time to work on a project or a task. Um, Some people find using an hourly timetable helpful. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I actually use both of these. Strategy number two is using a prioritization list. So you're actually going to be looking at your top three and all the additional tasks that you need to have done in a day and just making a list where you're setting it by priority. So maybe the first thing on the list is the most important and then the second thing is the next most important and so on and so forth. So when it comes to planning your actions out, do it by an hourly timetable or a prioritized list. Okay, so now let's talk about what this looks like in a planner, okay? So now we've got some graphics here. Now this is an example of what scheduling events would look like in a planner. Here's my planner, my Charmed Life Planner. It's the month on two pages view. And I have filled in here some, just some random events, right? We've got like paydays here that are like a reoccurring event. We've got like a birthday party, that might be a special event, right? A vet visit, that's an appointment, right? Um, a volunteer project that might be, you know, like a, a appointment as well. You've got like an expenses due that that's actually like part of a project, right? That's tracking something that is an, a, an event related to a project on your monthly to do list. Um, we've got some dinners, webinars, things like that. This is what you would think about when you think scheduling events. And I find that putting it on my monthly is a great way to kind of see an overview of the month. I personally, on my overview, and I will say this too, although it doesn't apply to everybody, my monthly overview is also used um, to plan out and map out my editorial calendar, my blog post, and my YouTube videos, because that's something that's very big in my work, right? So use your month on two pages, use your, or whatever your monthly calendar is going to be, use your calendar for scheduling events to really make sure that you are getting things that are important, you know, mapped out, like your reoccurring events like your appointments, like any special events and things like that. And, you know, things that really do pertain to your work and your life. So that is what it'll look like scheduling events. Just a little bit of a example for you guys. Next, we've got track ma- uh, task management, what that will look like. And right now we're looking at the Charmed Life Planner again, and we're looking at the master monthly task list. You can just see, I've just written out some just generic tasks here. But you can see having a dedicated list for one month where you're able to just list out everything that pertains to the month 
um, things that you want to have done in that month. A really great way to manage your tasks, keeps you focused, and making sure that you are actually, you know, you're not putting things on your to-do list that don't actually need to be done right now. So hopefully by using a monthly master task list, you're focusing on things that need to be done in that month and not things that might be someday maybe. It's like I said earlier, something that like doesn't have like a dedicated time frame to be finished. Um, if I don't set like one myself, like just an arbitrary date and say, look, I'm going to put it this month. It has to be done this month. If I don't do that, it goes on another just general task list. And like I said, those task lists aren't always prioritized because they're it's not, you know, it's not time related. There's no time boundness on this. So um, I think that breaking out your tasks by a month is great. And you're going to see more task management here as well. And also examples of daily schedule. So here's like, again, the Charm Life Planner. This is the vertical one that I use. This is like my actual planner. Um, you can see the, the spaces for the top three. So, you know, I've just given some random examples of what a top three would be for every day. Um, you can see that I have my top five tracked on the Monday column. So we've got the top five. I've got five things that might be a project or it might be an individual task. Um, but those are written out for me so I'm clear on what I'm focusing on for the week and what I'm prioritizing for the week. And then I've got an example of the schedule. I've got the today schedule where that's like an hourly schedule, right? So I've got like a time and then I've like filled in a task for each time. And then I've got an example of like what we'd say is like a, maybe a prioritized one, right? So this to-do list on the Wednesday, um, you know, we could say that those were the extra things that I needed to do. I've got my top three, which would be done first. And then the other to-do list is weighted. You know, we'd say that the, whatever's on top of that to-do list is most important. So I need to do it in order. So that is an example of how you would actually execute that in a planner. And of course, you know, the way you actually write things out might be different. I, you know, obviously I was doing this on the computer so I could give you guys a graphic for just some simple example, but that is an example of how you would manage a daily schedule, your, tra your tasks and um, your schedule in general. Now, of course, there are other planning activities um, that I think are important. Number one is project planning, right? So here's an example of like my project planning pages. Um, and I've just kind of mapped out like a, just like a simple project here, refinishing a bookcase, right? And what we're doing with this project planning page is really mapping out what our expectations are, like a due date for this project. We've mapped out some resources that we need. In this case of the refinishing the bookcase, these are like supplies that need to be purchased. And then I've got like action steps for all the individual actions and tasks that need to be done with the associated project. And of course, you know, with functional planning, what I would do is I would take um, for on a month to month basis, I would take each individual task and move it to the master monthly task list that it belongs to. In the example of this refinishing the bookcase, you, you'd assume like it's just something that you would just do, you know, maybe at a weekend or a week or whatnot. So it's not something that's going to be done over multiple months necessarily. So maybe all of the action steps would be moved to the master monthly task list. Or you could leave them here and just, you know, maybe put like the project name on the master monthly task list so you remember to come back to the project planning page to actually write out, you know, to see what all the tasks are that you need to get done and track it there. So that's an example of project planning, another very functional thing to be doing so that you are, you know, progressing on projects and you can do the same thing with goals. You could break out a goal into different projects and that is in a very functional way to use your planner. And then the next thing here is tracking. Okay, so tracking is something that I think we can do in very many ways. Obviously, you track your tasks within your planner, on your calendars, things like that. But I did get a lot of questions from people about, you know, how do I track my migraines or our health things or my weight or things like that. And this picture I'm showing you guys here is a, a just like a one-page printout insert that's actually a freebie on my shop. And you can see that it's a full year like January through December, listed out. And what you could do is you could use this as a tracker. Um, you could, whatever your goal is, you could write the goal on top and then mark off the days that you do the goal or whatever it is. Like, let's say this is a migraine tracker because for me, I get mig migraines. And I think, I'm, I know many of you guys as well, we've talked about this before. So let's say I was using this tracker as a migraine tracker. I'd write migraine tracker on top and maybe I would have whatever mark that I would use um, to mark off whatever days that they occurred. And I might even have like a symbol or a color coding or something like that to maybe explain the severity or something like that. So, you know, 
I think that using individual trackers um, like this can be helpful because something like this is just one page. It's like a fold, a fold out page, but it doesn't require you to have like another dedicated set of inserts. It doesn't require you to be using your inserts and using precious space on your weekly inserts um, or your monthly inserts to track something that might be very frequent or very common for you. So um, I like dedicated trackers and this is just an, one example of um, a way that you could track alternate from your planners. And like I said, it's a freebie in my shop. So if you guys don't have this tracker, you know, definitely go check it out. So that was part two. Okay. Now we are on to part three which is developing a consistent planning practice. Consistent action creates consistent results. This is a perfect example of a quote from Christine Kane. So this is something that is really big with me in Planner Peace, is that when we're getting consistent with our actions, specifically around using our planner, it creates consistent results. Consistently, if you're using your planner, you are going to find that you're going to be in planner peace, okay? A lot of this planner peace concept comes from the idea of consistency as well. Okay, so when it comes to planning consistency, planning needs to become a routine in your life if you want to find planner peace. And so I have a couple of different routines that I actually use um, that I go through throughout my month um, so that I am making sure that I'm prioritizing my planning and getting things done, making sure I'm actually using my planning. I know very many of you have struggled, do struggle with actually getting into setting a routine for planning. And I think that developing planning as a consistent practice is going to help you to build that muscle so that you're going to your planner and you're using your planner and ultimately finding planner peace because you're acting. Now, I do have a worksheet in your workbook that is about developing your practice, right? And it's gonna cover these three routines that I'm gonna talk about in a second. So the first routine is the monthly planning routine. This is something that I do on a monthly basis from 30 to 60 minutes. It could be more, <clears throat> that's just an average time, how much time I'll spend doing my monthly planning. On a weekly basis, I will plan um, my week for 15 to 30 minutes on average. And then on a daily basis, my daily planning routine, five to 15 minutes. So we're not talking about a tremendous amount of time here. Um, planning does not need to take hours and hours and days and days. You can establish these very simple routines for yourself and um, build those into your schedule. Make sure that you're, you know, prioritizing them and it really helps to develop the muscle. It helps to develop the consistency and it will lead you to planner peace. So your monthly, the monthly planning routine. On a monthly basis, you should spend 30 to 60 minutes mapping out your month. What I do during my monthly planning routine is I will reconcile project plans. So I'll, I'll go and make sure that I'm keeping project plans up to date. So checking things off, making sure tasks still apply, um, that things have not been missed and things like that. I will create my master monthly task list, right? I'll pull um, all of those tasks from my project plans and make sure that they're on my master monthly task list. I'll fill my task list, task list with other activities. And of course, you know, throughout the days and throughout the month, I will put um, other, act, you know, activities and things that pop up on there as well, just so I'm tracking them. And then, of course, on a monthly basis, I'm making sure to schedule my events into my monthly view, which we saw the example of what a monthly view might look like for someone. So this is part, this is my monthly planning routine. And this is not everything that I personally do for my monthly planning routine, but I think it's probably like the minimum for just like good planning practice. So like I said, in the workbook, you've got a worksheet that is about defining your monthly planning routine. And you can use these, they, I would definitely use at least these suggestions and think about other things that you might want to be doing on a monthly basis that'll help you plan, help you to be functional, help you to progress your goals in your life and bring you, you know, a sense of achievement and peace. Now, the weekly planning routine. On a weekly basis, you should spend 15 to 30 minutes planning out the week ahead. Again, something I will do at this point is reconcile project plans and my master monthly task list. Just make sure that I'm checking things off because what I will do on a weekly basis is pull tasks from my master monthly task list or my project plans and put them onto my week. So I want to make sure that I'm checking them off 
everywhere so that I don't miss anything and I don't duplicate work and um, I'm just keeping everything up to date. And also, you know, if you're like me, whenever you check a checkbox, it gives you a sense of accomplishment. So, you know, want to make sure that you're reconciling your work. Make sure that you've checked off everything that's not done so you don't get confused. That's done so you don't get confused. I'll also create that weekly top five list as we already talked about. And I will schedule events and tasks into my weekly planner view from the monthly. So if there was something that was on the monthly that pertains to the week, I'll put it in the week. And again, there is the worksheet that will help you use these suggestions to help you define what you want to do on a weekly basis, things that you know that you need to do or things that you feel like would be a really good part of a planning routine on a weekly basis. Develop your own simple planning routine, just needs to take 15 to 30 minutes. And then that daily planning routine. On a daily basis, spend five to 15 minutes planning out your daily schedule and your actions. What I'll do here, again, always reconciling always reconciling first, always making sure you're checking off things. Because I don't know if you're like me, sometimes I'll do things and I won't check them off. So the next day, I'll try to reconcile everything. So reconcile those project plans and your master monthly tasks. Create the daily top three list, right? That's something you want to do in the morning or in the evening before the next day is have that daily top three done. And create that daily hourly schedule or that prioritized task list so that you've got that plan out for what you're going to be doing. You've planned your actions for the day. And again, worksheet in the workbook. These are some suggestions. Feel free to fill out something else that might apply to you. Something like meal planning might go on your weekly. Um, If there's something specific to you that you might do on a daily basis, like a self-care thing or something like that. Something that you need to plan out or map out or make sure is included in your planner. Put that as part of your daily planning routine. Doesn't need to take up a ton of time. This is very, like we're talking, very minimal amounts of time here that we're spending on planning, but it really has a very positive effect on our lives and our productivity and our planner piece. Now, now I want to talk about brain dumps because brain dumps are another key part of planner piece. And they're another key part of my system and my functional planning system. So a key part of planning piece is having confidence that your planner includes all relevant tasks, plans, and information. So performing a brain dump, some people call this a digital, I'm sorry, a mental download, a daily download, whatever. I know sometimes people don't like the word brain dump, right? But that's what I call it. Performing a brain dump on a regular basis helps to fill the gaps between plans on paper and the information in your head. No matter how perfect your planner system is or how much you've achieved planner piece, I know I still struggle with this. I still keep plans in my head and don't write them down. So regularly performing a brain dump is a good way to make sure that you're getting information out of your head and onto paper so it can be tracked and accounted for. So I would say do a, to do a brain dump, all you need to do is take like 30 to 60 minutes or however much time you want, but like 30 to 60 minutes I think is a good amount of time to just sit down and write everything out that you're holding onto in your mind and then organize that information as necessary in your planner. Now everything that you write out is not going to be you know, have a place in your planner. You might write out some things that were already done or just ideas or things like that, but write it all out, get it all out of your head and onto paper, and then you can decide what you're going to do to it. If you're going to put it in your your planner, if you're going to put it on your calendar, if you're going to put it on a project plan or make a project plan, or if you're going to write about it in your journal instead, maybe you'll put it in a journal or somewhere else, right? But you can then decide what you're going to do with that information and it relieves you mentally and it also fills in the gaps so that you are developing that consistency and you feel like you've got confidence that your planner includes everything it needs to include. Another concept that I absolutely love that belongs to planning is this idea of the power hour. So no matter how well we plan, I think that little tasks always end up getting pushed to the side. I know this is so common for so many people. So on a weekly basis, I think it's great to plan a power hour where you set aside one hour to knock out a bunch of little tasks, right? So if you're someone who like throughout the week, it's like little things always kind of fall to the wayside, you can map out that power hour and, you know, make a list of these little little teeny to-dos and just knock them out. Just set the timer, knock them out. Um, and get into the habit of actually doing that so that you are being productive. So again, you are building that consistency and that you are building the confidence in your planner because the more confident you are in your planner, the more you're going to come back to it because you know it works and the more you're going to develop planner peace. So this will help to ensure that you're getting more done and staying on track with your planner. Okay, so that's the purpose of the power hour. 
Now, let's talk about barriers to planning consistency because there are some barriers and these are going to be some big things that I think many of you guys are going to relate to. The first one is comparison. And I love the quote, comparison is the thief of joy. When it comes to finding planner piece, putting together your system, being functional with your planner, your planner needs to work for you and you alone. It does not need to win any beauty pageants. It does not have to be perfect to work perfectly. If you guys remember, I said earlier, your planner only needs to do one thing well. It just needs to house the information. It needs to house the right information and you need to use it as a tool to map things out. That's all it needs to do. So it doesn't have to look perfect. It does not have to be perfect. It does not, um, you know, have to be beautiful. It doesn't have to have stickers and washi and anything like that in it for it to work. So I think that for many of us who do struggle with this, right, um, with the idea of, com of comparing our planners to other people's planners and thinking, oh, I wish my planner was more like this or I wish I had that or whatnot, I think the best way to stop the comparison trap is to stop looking at what other people are doing if it detracts from what you are doing. You know, if you can't set that limit between yourself and other people, you need to stop looking. And that's just a self-control thing. Um, I know so many people are probably watching just, you know, thinking like, Alexis, like, I wish you could give us some sort of magic silver bullet or whatever that would fix this. But the truth is that this is self-control on your own end. And self-control and comparison, this trap, it all relates to having your own muscle in your brain that tells you not to look or the muscle that tells you, oh, that's pretty not for me. Like I've got my thing, my thing that works for me. So that is what I have to say is comparison is a big barrier to planner piece because even if someone's planner is working, if they see something else that they think might be better, oh geez Louise. That's like the most dangerous thing is having something that's working or is system that's, you know, moving towards peace and being like, oh, you know what, this could be better, right? Like the grass is greener symptoms here, right? So you don't want to be feeling like the grass is greener somewhere else. You guys, there's endless amounts of options in the planner community. We all know this. Prioritize yourself for what you need and focus on that. Like don't worry about what other people are doing. I know it's so much easier said than done. I know that I struggled with it for a while too, but it's such a relief once you're able to overcome that barrier of comparison. Next is the barrier of self-confidence. And I love this quote from Chris Carr that says, confidence comes from just doing it anyway. So the thing you have to understand about self-confidence and confidence and why this even applies to planners is everyone struggles with their confidence, but the only way that you're going to build confidence is to act. And I bring up confidence because, again, I feel like when it comes to some people in the planner community, when I think of women, right, specifically we oftentimes struggle with self-confidence, and I think that that inhibits us from finding planner peace because we're not prioritizing our own goals. Um, I think that we think that our priorities and our goals are not important, like we're putting other people first, but the truth of the matter is, is that your priorities and your goals are just as important as the next person's, and the only person that's responsible for them is you. So if you are not prioritizing yourself, if you are not taking action on your own life, if you are not, you know building that confidence and getting the work done and you know doing the planning and taking yourself seriously, no one else is going to do it for you. And if you're really, truly someone who wants to find planner peace, ask yourself if confidence, if feeling like you lack something or feeling like you are not good enough or your dreams aren't big enough or your dreams aren't important enough. You know, this again, in a way, goes back to what I said earlier about how some people say like, oh, I wish I could have a planner, but I don't have a job or I don't, I'm retired, so I don't need one. Like it wouldn't be something that's that I need. And for me, that's almost like a confidence thing. Like you think that there's something about you that means that you couldn't have a planner. Like anybody can have a planner. I had a planner when I was 12, you guys. I wasn't doing anything important. So, you know, have that confidence, build that confidence, and the way you build it is to act. Everyone struggles with their confidence. That's plain, simple fact. You're not the only one. Um, it's just not something that we see in other people very often. We see it very heavily in ourselves. But, you know, if you want to break out of this, you need to act. You need to take action. You need to set up the planner, you need to stick to the planner, you need to build the muscle <laughs> that tells you that you're going to go and, you know, on a weekly basis, on a daily basis, on a monthly basis, you're going to go in and plan, and you need to start making plans for yourself. That's what you need to do, and you need to act on them. 
because that's how you build the self-confidence and that's a way that you're going to find planner peace. So something that I think is a good thing to try is try to leave reminders or images of what you're working towards or working for in and around your planner so that you're more likely to associate your planner with creating a life that you love, right? So a really good example of this is that they say that, you know, in offices, if you keep, you know, if someone keeps a picture of like their family on their desk, they become happier workers because they're constantly reminded that oh, this job that, you know, sometimes can be stressful, you know, I'm working for my family, right? So same thing with your planner and your confidence here. Leave inspiration for what your goals are, what your plans are. They don't have to be big grand plans. They can be something super simple, but leave that reminder somewhere near your planner, in your planner, so that you're associating your planner with those things that you want, so that you're more likely to act. And in acting, you're going to build your self-confidence. You're going to build yourself a path to planner peace. Next barrier to planner peace is procrastination. I know that that really afflicts me, and I know that it afflicts many of you as well. So the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. Walt Disney, is there anyone who has achieved really more in their life and like even a greater legacy? There's few people who have achieved the Disney, the Disney level here. Um, so when it comes to procrastination, we all know when we should be doing something productive, like planning, but instead we're focusing our attention elsewhere because it's easier than either getting to work or we just want to waste time. Like we're afraid to to work on something. We're scared of something. You know, when we all know when we should be doing something else. Like this isn't something where we're not aware of it. Procrastination is something when we stop and take a look at ourselves and we're like, oh yeah, I should be doing something else, but I'm not. I'm procrastinating right now. So when we take the time to make a plan, I think that it increases the chances that we're actually going to do it. But execution, again, is a muscle that you need to build. So if you're someone who is frequently procrastinating, you always like to you know, waste your own time doing something else, really building this muscle of planning, I think is going to help you to, number one, find planner peace because you're going to get into the habit of doing it. And it's also going to kill that procrastination. Um, you know, acting, right? Action is what begets action. So you just need to keep that in mind that, you know, everyone procrastinates, everyone struggles with this, but we all know what we should be doing. This is, again, self-control. This is really self-control, again. Um, so try to make planning, I think, the first thing on your list, or leave your planner open and out somewhere where you can't miss it. So if you're someone who, like, procrastinates on planning or has an issue with procrastination, um, I think that if the first thing you do in the morning, like when you get into your office or the first thing you do when you wake up and you know, you're know you done your morning routine or when you get downstairs is that you open your planner and plan in it, I think that that's going to help you establish a planning consistency that's going to lead you to the planner piece. And I think that if you're someone who maybe like, I don't like to leave my planner closed. Like if I leave my planner open, right, I'm more likely to see it. I'm more likely to want to go in it and play. So I think like keeping your planner out, keeping it open somewhere where you're going to see it, where you can't miss it. Like if you're someone who makes yourself breakfast every morning or packs your lunch, put the planner next to your lunchbox so you can't miss it so that you're reminded I need to plan so that I have my actions planned out for the day, so that I actually am executing on things, so that I don't procrastinate. So that is another barrier to planner piece, and I think that hopefully doing something like that, prioritizing your planning, leaving your planner out somewhere you're going to see it, keeping it open, something like that, I hope that helps you guys to build the execution muscle and find your planner piece. And then the final thing that um, is a barrier to planner piece is I think the idea of boundaries and limits. And here I'm saying clear boundaries create clear choices. I said that you guys, no one else said that. That was me. <laughs> um, clear boundaries create clear choices. So many of us struggle with developing consistency with planning because we own so many planners already. I know this is a problem I have. I have so many planners that I'm like, okay, well, I want to use this planner and then, oh, I want to use this planner next and I want to use that planner next. Um, I think that when we actually put limits on ourselves and put boundaries on ourselves and say something like, you can only use this planner, like you're not allowed to use any other planner, I think it forces us to create a boundary and create a limit 
that gives us a very clear choice. If you give yourself very few choices, you have very clear choices. <laughs> so when options are endless, I think we tend to have a hard time making choices. But if you impose a few simple boundaries or limits, suddenly choices become clearer, okay? So I think that this is just like a universal principle. So to establish a consistent planner routine and hopefully find that planner piece, I think you should just choose one planner right now to use box up any other planners or any other inserts or something like that and put them out of sight and tell yourself that you have to use this planner for a sig like whatever you know predefined period of time because i think that this is something that ends up hurting planner people in the planner communities when we have so many different options already um you know we already own them not even to like mention the fact that like when we see comparison things and then we want to buy something else i'm even talking about like just already owning more than one system I think if we force ourselves to, to use one planner, I think it's it, it becomes very clear that you can find a planner piece because you've set that boundary. Um, I actually firmly believe, and I've said this before, I firmly believe like you could give me anything, like a notebook, you could give me a planner from like the dollar store. And if you told me it was the only planner I was allowed to use, I would use it and I would make it work and I would be just as productive as I am right now with my full-fledged like perfect planning system. I think that bound setting boundaries and creating limits for yourself will help you to find planner peace. But again, self-control, not easy. This is something that we have to choose for ourselves. Okay, so that was the third section, but... I've got one other bonus section that's all about resources and finding the right tools to achieve planner peace. So we've talked about, you know, what a planner should be used for, you know, what goes in your planner, how to determine what your needs are. Um, now we want to talk about finding the right tools. So no matter where you currently are on your journey to planner peace, it's important for you to find the right tools to fit your planning and productivity needs. So if you're still struggling to find a complete functional planning system or would like to learn more about productivity and planning from me, here are some resources for you to consider, okay, that I've created. These are my resources. So you guys know the Charmed Shop. That is my digital shop where I sell all of my products. You can feel free to pop up um, a link to it, thecharmedshop.com. That is where I sell all of my things. But I've got some planner piece resources for you guys if you're still someone who's struggling with finding a system or developing the habits and routines that you need to support a productive lifestyle. So the first thing I've got for you guys that I want to talk about, and we've already mentioned it a little before, is the Charmed Life Planner. So the Charmed Life Planner is a printable planning solution that comes in three size and layout options, and it's the planner that I actually use. So I get a lot of questions about the Charmed Life Planner. It is a digital PDF. You print it out at home, or you can take it to like your local printer place, and they will print it for you. It comes with directions, but it comes in three sizes, a full letter A4 size, and it has a month on two pages with the master monthly task list, the monthly expense sheet, and a week on two pages view. We've got the A5 half letter that is a month on two pages with a week on two page vertical. And we've got a personal size, that's a Filofax personal size, month on two pages with a day on one page. So this is the Charm Life Planner US letter, the layout of it. Everything else is the same between the planners, like their, their monthlies and their um, master task lists and their expense sheets, but the layouts are what are different. They're unique for each size. So the US letter, full size one, this is the week on two page spread. And it actually comes with, um, on the left side, it's like all prioritized tasks and your top five projects and your top three and your task lists. And then on the right is a dashboard where you can create a schedule um, or you can track things or you've, and you've got like your market list, like a purchasing list, or if you want to have an, another space for a list or errands or things like that, and a weekly meal plan section, this planner actually comes in an option where you don't have the dashboard and it comes with the, with, uh, it actually comes with both of them when you buy it. So you don't have to buy anything separate, but there's two spread options when you purchase the Charmed Life Planner in the US letter size. One is week on one page and one is week on two pages actually. So this is the layout. It's a nice, big, beautiful layout that really optimizes the size of a full sheet of paper. So um, that will work for US letter or A4, really any paper size, like any full size paper, big, beautiful planner. And you can see I've got it in a disc bound system here. My Charm Life Planner in the A5 slash half letter size. This is the one that I use. This is the week on two pages vertical with your top three 
the open to-do list that can be either like a prioritized task list or it can be a hourly schedule if you want to make it an hourly schedule. And then it's got like a little like open box at the bottom that you can use for like decorating and pretty planning or you could put functional planning stickers in there or you can just write things out or it can be like an inspirational quote or a Bible verse or something that you want to have to remember for the day. It could be your focus for the day that you put in there. Whatever you would like to put in that open spot, but this is a very versatile spread. My favorite one, this is the one I've been in since 2015. And then the personal size charm life planner is a day on one page. And it's got these like beautiful um, dividers as well with like artwork, but it's a day on one page, one page per day. So this is the idea that, you know, a personal size planner is pretty small. The pages are small. So you might need just like a day on one page, right? Because you might have bigger handwriting, but you might want a smaller planner. So the Charm Life personal size planner takes care of that for you. And it does have an hourly schedule down on the left side that you can either ignore or you can use it if you want to. But just like a very simple, very versatile spread gives you enough room to really write down a lot of things for most people. Now, when it comes to my Charmed Life Planner, I also have what's called the functional planning bundles. So you can either buy a Charmed Life Planner like individually, like on its own, or you can buy it as part of a functional planning bundle. So when you buy a functional planning bundle, you're going to choose which size slash layout you want of the Charmed Life Planner, right? So if you buy the A5 functional planning bundle, you're going to get that one. If you pick the full size functional planning bundle, you're going to get that planner. So you get a Charm Life Planner in the size that you purchased. You're going to get the project planning pages and the yearly project overview, and you're going to get a task tracker. Everything you need to really start functionally planning, like out of the box. That's a com like super complete system. Like I realize that the Charm Life Planner in and of itself is a very complete system, but when you add the project planning and the yearly overview and the task tracker, there's like nothing you can't accomplish. Like it's super functional. Now, I also have within the shop that I think could apply to many of you here today are other planning masterclasses. So today we've done this planner piece masterclass, but I have two other planning masterclasses that are video masterclasses just like this. We've got the productivity and planning masterclass, which teaches the fundamentals of productivity and choosing planner inserts for your needs. So if you're someone who struggles with productivity um, or really struggles with, you know, choosing inserts and what's available and all those options, productivity and planning masterclass can definitely help you with that. And there's the planning for success masterclass, which teaches my complete planning process. And it's geared towards those of you who wish to use their planners to achieve goals or manage a very busy work and personal life. So if you're someone who really struggles with priorities and you're like, I've got so many big goals and I, I just like get so overwhelmed and like, you know, how do I map it all out? How do I make it all happen? How do I define the routines? How do I build the habits? That's the planning for success masterclass. And you can also get them together as a bundle and it's like less expensive. That's called the Work Smarter Not Harder Masterclass Bundle. And you get both of them. Um, so if you want one or other or both of them together, you can buy them at a discount. And then of course in the Charm Shop, I also have plenty of free planning tools as well. So I have yearly calendars, yearly trackers, as I already showed you, and overviews. I've got monthly to-do lists and dashboards that are put out every month. And monthly tech wallpapers, just fun, inspirational, free, low stress uh, sorts of planning tools that can help you to get more organized and reach planner peace. So what I want to ask you guys right now is what is holding you back from planner peace? Like, do you have a sense now that we're coming towards the end of this class? Do you no, do you feel like you know what's holding you back? Like, do you know what those obstacles are um, that are holding you back from achieving what you want to achieve with your planner? Because when it comes to these planner of peace resources that I just shared with you, I think I've got a few scenarios here. So if you need help deciding what you might need from um, resources in the future, right, and from my shop, if finding a complete planning system is your issue, like you're someone who's like having a hard time finding a planner system or you're someone who's not using a planner yet but wants to get started with a good complete system, the Charmed Life Planner or the Functional Planning Bundle is a great system, right? So the Functional Planning Bundle, you get a Charmed Life Planner and extra things. So if you're looking for a planner system that is complete, that has a place for everything and everything in its place, the Charmed Life Planner is definitely a great option. Three sizes on my shop. Definitely check it out. So if you're lacking motivation for productivity, right? 
like you're just like not motivated, you don't feel like you have the right information, you don't know different strategies and and you know tips for building productivity in your own life, definitely the productivity and planning masterclass is going to help with that because it really is the fundamentals of productivity and the fundamentals of planning um, are incorporated in that masterclass. And if you have a busy life with many different priorities that you struggle to balance in your planner, the Planning for Success Masterclass is perfect for you, okay? So I think that that would be a great masterclass for you if you're someone who's already using a planner or struggling with their planner, but you're like, oh, I've got goals, but I don't have them mapped out, and you know, I'm not sure what my priorities are, and like, how do I track my priorities and turn them into project plans, and how do I make sure I'm managing a busy life with work and a busy life with home, you know? If that's something that you need help with, Planning for Success Masterclass is the solution for you. Now it's time for open Q&A. So let me know what your questions are and uh, we will um, get those answered if you guys still have any questions. And I would love to hear you know, from you guys how you guys are feeling right now at the end of this class. If you feel like it helped to open your eyes, if it helped to um, you know, give you some inspiration, help you to identify issues or gave you information you needed in order to find planner peace, I would love to hear what you are thinking now that this is over. Because you know, I love getting your feedback and seeing what was working with this. But I also want some questions. So let me know your questions now. And of course, you guys, you can head on over to the Charm Shop if you want to check something out. Um, there's a lot of resources over there for you guys. And if this class was helpful for you guys, and this was a this was a free class, the Planning for Success and Productivity and Planning Master Classes are tremendous. Um, I've gotten nothing but positive feedback from those. So. Someone asked, do I have a course on GTD planning? Um, I don't have one specifically on GTD. However, if you're looking for a course that is on planning, like my planning methodology and my process, that's planning for success. That's the planning for success masterclass. So people are saying they're feeling motivated. Sheila says, would you suggest doing a bit on each goal each day or one goal per day? Um, I think that it's up to you, Sheila. Like, I think that... It's up to the way your schedule is and um, like what you can handle within a day. And I would say too, like when you're getting started with this, don't feel like really overwhelmed that every day of the week you need to be working on something that's goal related. I sometimes actually like, you know, I'll spend like half of a week only working on just like random things that really aren't like goal related. Um, just like, you know, the things of everyday life, the minutia that we all need to get done. Um, so I think that it, it's about what, works for your life. But I think when it comes to your goals, you do want to make sure that you're touching them weekly. Like I would say touching them weekly would be a really realistic place to be. Um, because that means that every week you're moving a goal forward. So touch a goal weekly, um, and make sure that you're not working on more than three goals at one time. You don't want to be overwhelming yourself. So Andrea said, this is very inspirational. I'm so glad. Oh, I don't want to lose my place. Where am I? Where did we go, guys? Oh, there's Sheila's comment. Okay. <laughs> um, Judy says, what is the best way to identify what you should, need, want to plan in your planner? Will a brain dump do that? Okay. So remember we said earlier that um, you want to think about your priorities, your obligations, um, so your, your job, the activities that you do, the people that you're responsible for. So maybe write out all of those things, the answers to that whole section where we were just talking about that. And I'm trying to find the page so I can, here it is, determining your planning needs. Um, what are your current obligations and priorities? Answer that in a brain dump, sure, or journal it if that helps. Who are you responsible for? What employers, activities, organizations, institutions take up your time? So think about those things, the things that take up your time and the things that you're responsible for and the things that you feel like are a priority in your life that might be like your own personal things. Because you start with those, brain dump it, journal it, and think about how you want to incorporate that into your planner. Uh, Lao says, I know you use the GTD system. I don't actually use the GTD system. Like my system that I use is my functional planning system. Um, 
GTD is a methodology that I, I highly recommend and I definitely use pieces of it, but not the whole thing. Uh, do you organize your projects long-term someday goals using your project tracking layout? Yes, I do. Correct. I use the project planning printables. So if you're someone who maybe has your inserts that you already like, I have project planning bundles in the shop for personal and A5 size. But of course, you get the project planning stuff in the Charm Life Planner if you do the functional planning bundles as well. Oh, it's 3 a.m. in Australia. Lorel, get to sleep, girl. You can watch the replay. So I think this is Lizzie said, definitely helped me realizing that putting it in one planner is not an impossible dream. Good. What are your thoughts on color coding? Yes, I love color coding. That's excellent. I think that color coding is great. If color coding is something that you, like if it speaks to you, like it works for you, then it's great. Um, I think that's there's not a problem at all. If you could use one planner for both. Yeah, absolutely. Color code it. Absolutely. If color code, color coding is just not something I'm very good at. I've tried it before. It's a great way to organize information like visually, just like, you know, some pretty planning aspects can help you organize information visually. But if color coding is something that you, that speaks to you, definitely use it. And you can use that not just for work and one for personal, you can color code your family. You can color code different like obligations or priorities. Like you can go all out with color coding. Someone said, where do you put reference material in your planner? I keep that in a separate binder, absolutely, because it does not have anything to do with my activities. Um, yeah, reference material is somewhere else. Oh, hold on, blue, 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 where am I going? Oops, here we go. Um, Joe says, really open, really opened my eyes to where I was struggling. I need to take another look at my planner layouts and inserts. Thanks. So glad, Joe. Maddie's going to rewatch. Rachel says, I'm in a planner dilemma. I've bought so many planners and love them all. How do I choose? You just have to choose, girlfriend. You just have to choose um, and stick to one. So go through the motions of, of deciding what size you need and, you know, choose the one that you think is the prettiest right now. Like just do whatever, the one that's the most functional, the prettiest, whatever one right now, or have a friend or a family member choose one for you <laughs> at random. But you know, you need to get down to one. And I know how hard it can be, but you just need to like stick to your guns. Can I use washi tape to seal up the box of planners? Yes, you can, Shannon. But it's really easy to open washi tape stuff. So you might want something a little heavier. <laughs> Pamela says, do you suggest having a whole year worth of inserts in your planner or just a few months at a time? Pamela, I would say do what fits for you. So I don't actually have a full year of inserts, I don't think. I, don't, I only keep half a year at a time. Yeah, I only keep half a year with me because that's what fits. Um, I don't do a lot of forward planning. Um, I'd say this, that if I did have things that needed to be forward planned, I would probably just have like another tracker. Like I do have this yearly tracker overview that's a free printable Pamela that actually is like a two page thing. It's like a front and back and it's like a, it's a, it's actually like a bifold and it, um, it has like every day of the year. So you could only like put whatever amount fits so that you're getting everything in and then use a tracker like that. And if a appointment pops up, you can go and write it on that tracker and then just fill it in. Um, when you get to moving those months over. I mean, for some people who like use day on a page, like I've seen people who use like a day on one page insert and they only put like a month at a time. If that works for you, like if it, on a monthly basis, when you do your monthly planning, if you want to swap out to the next month, absolutely. It's just about what you would like to have. And I do like to have a few months at a time, but I think six months is good. It fits my planner. It fits what I need. Um, but if I needed more room, for other like another section or something like my project planning that got really big um i would take my i would take months out i don't care um there's other ways that you can track things and forward plan without having to have your entire planner in there because remember like i said you're only planning like one day at a, like you're only planning one month at a time one week at a time one day at a time kelly says she doesn't think she took notes like this since she was in school i'm so glad and Sheila, the Touch em Weekly helped. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Maddie says, actual planning. Absolutely. This is actual planning. Functional planning is actual planning. 
So Sin says she feels more motivated to plan better and actually work uh, on their goals better. That's awesome. Do you have a video where you work through all your sections? Yes. Um, Kelly, I have a 2017 planner set up. That's from December. That's still as things are, more or less. Do I have any classes or videos about goal planning? Okay, so Andrea, if you're if you're looking at goal planning, I actually have two products that relate to goal planning. One of them I didn't include in this, um, but I guess I should have. Um, it's my You Got This workbook. So I have a workbook called You Got This that's all about outlining your plans and turning them into project plans and getting started on them. Also, the Planning for Success Masterclass goes into goal planning as well, starting with like, your priorities into your goals into project plans and that's more of like a hands-on like this is how to do it sort of a thing and then the you got this is more of um, it's like worksheets and you spending time like thinking about your goals and things like that so I do have two products on that you got this and planning for success are goal planning oriented and execution oriented Sierra asked about color coding and I answered that earlier. Is it okay to include a budget in functional planning? Absolutely, Kim. In my, in the, you know, in the Charmed Life Planner, you may have seen like when we were looking through it earlier, I do have an expense sheet. Like I have an expense sheet where, you know, I keep my expenses, which you could use as a budgeting sheet as well. Um, I think that it's okay for you to add things into your planner that make sense for you, right? But you want to make sure that your planner is at least functional, right? You want to make sure your system is at least functional. And the problem that I end up finding with most people is that most people will put so many inserts and so many sections in it that it the actual planning doesn't end up happening because they've got so many other sections. So if your planner has room for budgeting in it, absolutely, go ahead and do it. If not, maybe make your own budgeting planner. Um, but I always find that it's, it's not that people, you know, are like having trouble adding things. It's that they are having trouble removing things. So that's when we need to get down to the bare bones of what is functional and what's going to help you pl actually plan. Uh, and you also asked what the GTD system is. GTD is the name of a book called Getting Things Done by David Allen. It is a resource in the resource guide that you guys can check out. It is a very good productivity book, like the best one, I think, you know, there's so many good ones, but it's a great productivity book to get you started. Um, I've done many videos on different GTD sort of things, getting things done, um, like processes and things like that. Um, it's not ultimate, it's more of a task management than necessarily planning, but it definitely, I mean, it definitely goes in with planners. Like it absolutely does. What is your thoughts on electronic <clears throat> and paper planning? Like I said, <coughs> I'm sorry, you guys, let me take a sip. Hmm. Choking on my own words here. Okay, let's do that again, Andrea. What are your thoughts on electronic and paper planning? So like I said earlier, I think a planner can be electronic or it can be paper. Um, I think that if electronic works for you, use it. Use it, use it, use it. I actually use both electronic and paper. I've got my paper planner because I like to write things out. I do find that like for um, retention and creativity reasons, like writing is very cathartic and it really helps me to like get my ideas out. But I also use like a calendar on my phone and like a list, you know, maker on my phone. I don't necessarily track tasks on there, but if I'm out and about and I'm like, I need to remember like, oh, do this task or add this to a project plan, I'll definitely put it in. So I think you need to use what works for you. If you're not a paper person, don't use paper, use electronic. I mean, most of us here are most likely paper people. So um, sorry, I have not gone in depth in digital because it's not something I use. So it's not something I'm, I feel like I'm confident talking about. Maybe in the future, I might do a video on electronic planning, but um, yeah. So I think anything that gets the job done is great. And I think electronic in many ways has benefits over paper because, um, you know, paper can be ruined. It can be, um, you know, erased, it can be scratched out, you know, um, and electronic is great because, you know, you get reminders and things like that that pop up. And, you know, it used to say that like, you know, paper is better than electronic because electronic requires batteries, but I feel like all of us have so many chargers nowadays. Like how often do you really like, 
your phone, your phone or your computer dies. You know what I mean? So I think that electronic is great. If that is what works for you, absolutely use it. Hmm. Monica asked, do I perform brain dumps in my planner or do I use a separate journal for that? Monica, what I do actually is I take like extra um, disc bound paper. I just take extra paper, right? And I just, um, what I'll do is, because you know, I, I have the disc bound so I can add and remove pages. I just take an extra like blank piece of note paper and I'll do it on that. And I'll sometimes just leave the brain dump in the planner until the whole process is done. Because sometimes I'll brain dump and then I'll come back later and then start organizing the information. I also like to just keep, I, I just like to keep that, that brain dump list. So you could use it on a separate journal or on a, just a separate piece of paper. I like to keep it in my planner and where I actually store it is like, I'll actually store it between my master monthly task list and my master expense sheet, um, for the month so that it's just in there. Um, it doesn't always stay there permanently. I will remove it, but, um, I do like to keep it in there just for like reference. I'm so glad that this has helped Stephanie. I don't know what Franken planning is, you guys, but my opinion is probably that if it works for people, good. Like, let them do it. I don't know what that means, though. <laughs> Franken planning. Is it like breaking apart planners and putting them together? I don't know. <laughs> Someone says, How do you specifically plan your cleaning schedules and such? Are they in your planner along with your work things? Hmm. I used to keep it in my planner, but I don't keep it in my planner anymore. And honestly, Christy, I'm not the best person to talk about cleaning schedules because I actually am not the person who's in charge of cleaning very much in my house. So I know, like, it's one of those things, like, I know on Fridays that I run the vacuum. And by run the vacuum, I mean I turn on the robot. Because um, some of you guys know I have a robo vacuum. And I do tend to be the kind of person that cleans up as I go. Um, but I don't, I don't really keep a cleaning schedule and I'm not the person who's in charge of doing the laundry, but I do meal plan. I do meal plan in my planner and I just write it out. I just keep, um, like I'll just run, make a list like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and what the meals are going to be. But I do have a meal planning bundle too. If you guys want a meal planning bundle, I do have one in the shop. Um, let's see. Kim says she's feel stronger now to stick with just one planner. That's excellent. Oh, oh, oh. Gina said, no, Gina, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't like to give out the slides. I'm sorry, but you can refer back to the plan. You can come back to the video. Um, you do have the replay, so it's not like you're going to lose out on it and you can go back and take notes on whatever pages that you needed, but I'm, I don't like to hand out the slides. So a lot of people seem to be getting, you know, have some good insight here, which is awesome. Sheila says she's got the You Got That Workbook, and it's really amazing. Excellent. That's so, I'm so glad, Sheila. Thank you so much. The free yearly printables are over on my shop, thecharmedshop.com. Um, I recommend sorting them by price. If you go and you change my sort options on the page, if you sort by price, everything free comes up first. Uh, Sierra says, what is the difference between your other two planning masterclasses? So uh, the, <laughs> the productivity and planning masterclass is pro like strategies for being productive. So it's basically teaching you like productivity, like 101 sort of. So different strategies, different things to think about with creating focus and establishing a productive lifestyle. And then it also goes into planners and planning in terms of just different layouts of options that people can get and um, different size planners and things like that. So it goes into that. It doesn't go in depth to every single type of planner there is, but it does give you an overview of, you know, the different options you have when you're trying to start your planner and, you know, plan productively. And then planning for success is literally my process and you watch me, like you watch me go through the process basically. It's my process for building success in my own life, starting with my priorities and go, then moving into goals, turning the goals into projects and then turning the projects into, you know, functionally planning everything out. Um, so we go, we go more in depth into functional planning. We kind of did like a, just like a skim the surface here and then we go more in depth into functional planning. Um, and then it's more habit building, routine building, um, just supporting a productive lifestyle so that 
if you are someone who's very busy or has a lot of different priorities, it will help you to clarify those priorities and to really start living in a way that you are helping yourself to make your goals um, and your uh, and things that you're wanting in your life happen for yourself. So it's less theory. I would say productivity and planning is more theory and examples and um, planning for success is like you watching me. Like it's part, it's, it is partly lecture, but there's also like sections where you're watching me do things. Like watching me build a project plan, watching me fill out planner inserts. The business planning bundle has been renamed to the, the functional planning bundle. So the inserts that were in that are now in the functional planning bundle. So if you were looking for the, if you remember the business planning bundle from last year, it's the functional planning bundle now. Awesome. So Joe says she's reading Getting Things Done now and she's implementing it. Awesome. Kim says, we'd be coming out with a horizontal style for A5. I do have a horizontal style of planner inserts. It's not a, it's not a charmed life planner, but I do have A5 and personal size horizontal style inserts on my shop, but it's just the week on two pages horizontal. So Andrea says she likes paper, but she can't always have it in her planner with me. She likes using Google Calendar. Awesome, awesome. So there's definitely there's definitely a lot of other options for people to use if you know paper is not always right for you. And thank you to Keisha. Okay, so you guys, I think we've done good so far. This is it's only four. I'm I was like afraid this was gonna be like forever. You guys know that I'm forever. I mean we're over three hours, over two hours at this point. But if anyone has any final questions, feel free to ask them now. Um, and if not, we can head on our merry way. Um, I am going to be sending you guys some more follow-up information about the class and, you know, replay stuff because this is, this actual video is actually going to go down. I'll send you guys the replay tomorrow and I'm going to give you guys some, just, uh, just some extra things, right? So, um, just some extra information. So keep an eye out on your email for that. But I hope you guys have a happy Easter and thank you guys so much for spending this time with me. If you um, think of a question later, feel free to email me, you guys. You guys know you can always do that. So yeah, head on over to the shop if you want to check out different inserts and things like that. You know, the inserts in my shop are all, um, what are they called? They're all digital downloads that you can print and reprint on demand. So I think it's like a wonderful... I think it's a wonderful value. I love doing printables and I know a lot of people do too. So feel free to, uh, oh, let's see, someone have a question for me. Perfect size planner is too big to carry around. What are your thoughts on using a smaller satellite planner? Um, I think it is asking for trouble. I mean, I think if you know the what is gonna be the perfect planner for you, I think you just need to find a way to make it work. <laughs> um, I do think that it's asking for trouble, Gina. Um, yeah. Now, something that I do do sometimes, I'll tell you, is that a lot of times, Gina, like with my planner, because I don't tend to carry it around with me, is I will, if there's information that I need while I'm out and about, I'll just take pictures on my phone and I'll have it to reference, which I know is maybe a little silly, but that's, I mean, it works for me. So, yeah. Okay. So that, that looks like it might be it, you guys. So thank you guys so much for coming and I will be shooting you guys an email soon. Bye.